Hey everyone, welcome to Royal Toronto Podcast. Got a special guest, Ben Bankus. Hello. How are you today, man? I'm uh, I'm great. I'm absolutely great. Fantastic. I already had a sauna. I was on a an elliptical listening to Gunna. Having a- <laughs> Gunna. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's good, man. How do you feel today? How's everything going? How's uh how's life been, man? Pretty good. I, I um I don't know if your followers know or your fans listening, but I guess like two weeks or a week and a half ago, I had a bunch of people in the U.S. get mad at me for doing a, an a impersonation of Olivia Chow, and um, which they were saying was a Chinese accent. I thought I was mocking her for yeah. being uh, special needs, but uh, I guess that's it was kind of a little bit Chinese as well. But um, yeah, so people were like, wishing death upon me and um you know people somebody called i have like a one-year-old somebody commented on a picture of her and was like your kid's fat (laughs) (laughs) you're just in your kid yeah and like i don't know just funny stuff people were like threatening my mom they're like your mom's gonna be like yeah gonna go pay your mom a visit i was like my mom's in a senior home. well i haven't been in a while so it'd be nice if you actually went and visited her (laughs) she would appreciate that um, so, but everything's fine. We just, you know, we had some venues cancel on me cause they basically pussied out and were like scared of the backlash. Cancel culture. They were, people were commenting on the venues that, uh, you know, uh, Instagrams and sending them emails that I was racist and that I shouldn't be allowed to perform there. So they canceled it. And then when my fans found out, they just commented on those their Facebook pages as well and sent them emails. So mm-hmm. they, they've got way more emails, angry, like angry people from, uh, from Your my side, side, yeah, which I'm not really proud of necessarily, but you know, it's nice to have somebody standing up rooting uh, for you. Cause I can't really, I'm not gonna, I just go, okay, it's canceled here. I post the email and sell tickets to the next one, you know, but, but it's been good. It's been good. Thank you for asking how I'm doing. Yeah. I feel healthier. I know I look fat, but I, I've been trying to concentrate on my health, my mental health. Mental health is important. Mental health is the real wealth. But yeah, going back to Olivia Chow video, what made you make that video? Because that video went <laughs> viral. So much reactions to it. A lot of pages posted it. We posted it. What made you make that make that video in the first place? Well, I ran for mayor as well. So I thought originally when John Tory, former mayor of Toronto, was found to be sleeping with um that girl with the big forehead um and then he stepped down so i was like the funniest thing i could do is say that i'm running for mayor right yeah i'm I'm always trying to do something funny before that happened i put blow up dolls in the subway system because people were getting stabbed and stuff and so i put a bunch of like basically like they were like sex dolls with blown up and we taped them to like the subway we put t-shirts on them that said like transit safety doll and it was like to make people like feel safe in the subway. It's just like funny things. So then we're like, we'll run for mayor. So I ran for mayor. And during that run for mayor, I was making all these funny videos trying to be like, you know, overly woke. Like we're going to tear down every building made by white people and replace mm-hmm. it with either a teepee or a mosque or, you know, we're going to do all this like woke stuff. We're going to get rid of blah, blah. That was before the Muslims were um, mad at the gays. Yeah. That was when that was when the, the liberals were like, we want Muslims. And then the gay, the Muslims were like, we don't like gays. And they were like, we don't like Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> so I was running. So at first I was just running as a joke. I wasn't really running. And then I was like, how can I run? Oh, it's 200 bucks. You know, I know Chris guy, you had him on the show. He ran yeah, way yeah, a little more seriously than I did. Yeah. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I ran and one of the joke videos I made was I identify as Olivia Chow. Mm-hmm. I was saying I am Olivia Chow. Yeah. And that was kind of like my angle at the time was just being like, I am Olivia Chow, whatever. And then it became, okay. And I previously made fun of Teresa Tam, who was. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She's like the Canadian Dr. Fauci, mm-hmm. right? And she was a Chinese woman during the pandemic being like, yeah, don't I go I outside, oh, wear a mask for sick. Um, and so I was like, fuck it. I'll just do Olivia Chow as with the Chinese accent. She kind of has a Chinese accent. Let's be honest. Olivia Chow, she says a little bit like that. So, and she also has, she got too many vaccines, so she kind of, but anyway, um, so I, I mean, it's comedy, whatever. So I did it and I did a few of them and I put them on Instagram and they got a lot of views with my fans. 
And then uh, one day, you know, on TikTok's kind of like, it's an afterthought for me, really, TikTok. So I was like, oh, I haven't posted this one on TikTok. Let me fire it off. And I post it and then I go and look and it's got like 50,000 views. And it's like all these people tagging this Korean woman in the U.S. who like. Suga. Suga. Su- su- <laughs> she like she's like cancel culture queen. She like goes around me like, don't say anything bad about Chinese people. I'm Korean. Anyway, so. She made a video saying that I should quit comedy and that I should find a new profession. And all of her followers are like maniacs. A lot of them are like LGBTQ in the bio, like fucking just just completely nuts. A lot of them, some of them over 500 pounds. And these people just started sending emails to all the venues, started commenting on all my posts, trying to get my shit taken down. I had to block a lot of people, to be honest with you. I was like, I don't know what you guys do, but like, I was just like, I'm not allowing this person to comment. I'm reporting this. I'm reporting that like going through every fucking post. I'm report, report. And like, I don't know, maybe there's a threshold where you're just so big where like the doesn't care. But I was like, yo, I don't want these people to fucking take down my goddamn account. Yeah. That's what they wanted to do. Yeah. Right? They want to take away my ability to make mm-hmm. money completely. Mm-hmm. They want my account gone. They want the content gone. They want the venues to cancel. They want the, my fans to disappear. Like I was getting messages like. We're going to get you just dis- like we're going to destroy you. And then your fans are never going to even remember who you are. It's just like sick people, right? Like sick, sick, sick people. So, um, you know, that's not really what you asked me. What made me want to do the video is kind mm-hmm. of like I was already doing the whole joke. I am Olivia Chow. And then once she yeah. won, I was like, let's just make some videos about it uh-huh. and put on the wig and be hilarious. And obviously you people either love it. Or they hate it. They're not just like, oh, like, because it's funny and it's, you know, it's stupid. Like, that's why it's funny. And I think that bothers, like, there's a lot of hater, unsuccessful people out there who just, they're just mentally ill and they just, they can't stand the fact that they never did anything or tried to do anything. So they just see everything, anything that's, those same people are hating on everyone. You know what I mean? That's their job. They're, they're, they hate the police. They're, yeah, they're, that's their role in society is just going around being upset. So thank you to the haters for uh, for getting me everything. <laughs> the haters started all this. Basically. But yeah, you've been doing comedy for a while now. What made you start comedy and like how long have you been doing comedy for like doing those live shows? So I started comedy in 2011. I was 19. Oh, nice. And um, I, I mean, I always wanted to do comedy. I was always watched comedy my mom was very knowledgeable of comedy she showed me everything you know she showed me richard pryor and george carlin and eddie murphy and you know probably i was probably too young to watch this shit but i was she was like you're already watching i was watching south park Mm -hmm. you know i was allowed to play fucking grand theft auto like you know i was just like that's kind of our generation i feel like you're from that generation too like if you couldn't play grand theft auto your friend could and like you'd go to his fucking place exactly. and play it. his parents were like, I don't give a shit. It's a fucking video game. Play yeah. it. Leave us alone. Let us get drunk <laughs> so you can and stop bothering us. Right. So um, I just liked being funny. And, you know, uh, in Toronto, there's a, the, not as much now. But when I started, there was a real comedy scene. There was a lot of places that had comics that were on TV because there used to be something called comedy now. And there was much music had a lot of comics were on their video on trial. Yeah. And there's no social media. So if you were on those things as a Canadian comic, you were killing it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so there, you know, we got to mix. You had Ron Jossel on the show. Right. Uh, I think. Right. Did you have Ron one? Jossel? Yeah. No, no. no. Um, well, I saw him on some podcasts. I thought, I thought it was on you. <laughs> you guys are all the it. same one. I think you guys shared it though. But, probably. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Probably shared. But uh, he, you know, he was on video on trial when I started and I was just like, that's so sick. Like I'm 19. Like I want to do comedy. Right. Um, so I just kept doing comedy. I got some, I had different jobs. I worked in sales. I sold photocopiers. <laughs> I lied on my resume and said that I graduated university. And you have to, sometimes you have to do what you have to do to get the job in. Yeah. That and the people is. who aren't willing to, that, that's like a background research survival of the fittest. Yeah. So I did that and I like, got a lot of real world world experience business experience which was cool but i kept doing comedy and 
2019, I like quit my real estate. I had a real estate job Mm -hmm. doing office leasing. And I was just like, I don't want to do this. Like I made a bit of money and I was like, fuck this. I went and lived with my mom and she was, she had, she, I didn't know, but she had like dementia, the early stages. And then we found out like, like a month and then a month before I found out she had dementia in February, 2020. And then March, 2020 was like, like you can't leave your home for yeah. two years. So, mm-hmm. um, during that, like I, and I had been doing comedy already like seven years or whatever, eight years. And there was no comedy. There was no stand up. I wasn't, I didn't have a following. I was nobody. And I was just like, what the fuck do I do? So I started making fun of Teresa Tam and, you know, Doug Ford mm-hmm. and fucking Trudeau and all these people that were pissing me off because we couldn't leave the fucking house. Like, it was yeah. ridiculous. Like, I, I hated that. That was an awful time of an awful time. And, you know, I remember at the beginning of the people with the pots and pans and they'd go and they'd stand in their window and they go bing, bing, bing at seven o'clock. And they thank you for locking me inside. Like, it's just the dumbest fucking shit. And so I would make videos. I I got a a loudspeaker when they do the pots and pans. I'd just be like, the virus was made in a lab in Wuhan. I was just like, <laughs> I was just like saying crazy shit. Yeah. And 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 posting. So I was gained some fall a bit of following from that. And then I decided I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do a comedy show mm-hmm. somewhere. Like you're not allowed to do it, but I'm gonna do it. So we went to Christie Pitts, and. Like, I grew up in that area, basically, and I grew up Bathurst and Bloor, Christy Pitts, where I played baseball as a kid. So we go to Christy Pitts, and we I went to Long and McQuaid. I got the speaker. I got the wireless shit. I got the wireless lights, like a spotlight in the... Because it's dark, right? You go there at like 7, 8 o'clock. And it was June 5th. That was the first show. And we just did it. And it was great there was like because there was hundreds of people on the hill right they were nobody it was locked down they, that was the only place they could go was the fucking park <clears throat> so we did that and um just killed it for them and then we were like let's do it again the next week we came back cops like 30 cops you know and they were like you can't do this like fines like you're not like, uh, yeah you shouldn't be doing this is 2020 2021 yeah okay and you know threatening fines and then they had there was like a bylaw officer who had braces being <laughs> like you can't do this and there's like people there right it's like but oh you can't gather you can't do this all the shit so we moved it we moved it and we ended up doing it for a, a bunch of a long time and um it was for like 12 weeks in a different park bickford park and then the cops obviously eventually were like, you can't fucking do this anymore. Mm-hmm. But then when they shut it down, that's when things finally opened up. And then I started doing it and, and selling, it's like selling tickets. Because yeah. we were doing free shows for the people. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing. And it was, but it was, it, it was the same shit was happening then with cancel culture. There was people who were mad because I was in the fucking, I was in a, in a public park going, don't go outside. Teresa, time say you can go outside. Get a vaccine. Or whatever. There weren't even vaccines at that point, I don't think. But I was like, wear a mask for sex. That was a bit. <laughs> you put a mask on, you will have a say. Maybe that mask. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just fucking. I do a joke about that. How they, they have mask porn now. Or it's like, come on, my mask. <laughs> and then she's like, okay, let me take it off. It doesn't work anymore. Yeah. But, um, you know, and so people were pissed. And then there was other people that were bringing their kids there. And were like, I want, I don't give a fuck. Fuck, turn on. I live here. I want my kid. This, you know, 12 year old kids. Not like, but like when we were, if we were 12, we watched South Park. We did all yeah. this shit. If there mm-hmm. was a lockdown and there was comedy and some guy say, talking shit about Trudeau, and I'd be like, come on, let's like, if, you know, to my kid, um, let's like at least check this out. Um, you know, and so, but anyway, there was all these comedians trying to cancel it and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so that was that, that was 2020 and 2021. And then, you know, just building all this crazy other shit, man, doing pods, doing, um, you know, stand up clips, having stand up clips go viral. But that's kind of like what I didn't start any of the viral stuff till like 2019. Mm, okay. Okay. And now your Instagram page is buzzing. You're getting shows, people trying to get you to their venues. You have like all these things going on. You're viral here and there, but it took a lot of hard work. It took a lot yeah. of hard work, risk-taking chances. What are you going to do? You know, mm-hmm. so it was, but it paid off well in the end, you know? 
Still, yeah, it's still a lot of work to be still done. Still more work, yeah. But it's headed for a good direction before, yeah. unless they, the cancel culture comes for you. Unless they for, delete everything that I've ever made and try to dead name me or whatever. Isn't that what? No, that's when you become trans. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. That's If I, they cancel me, I'll just become fully trans. Yeah. Tell the audience how you got your videos back. What did you tell Instagram and TikTok? During the Olivia Chow controversy where I made the Olivia Chow video and everybody was trying to cancel me and people were reporting my videos on TikTok, I realized the best way to get the videos back was to just say that I was a special needs person. So I would just say, I'm special needs in the like to the robot, like in the appeal. I'm a special needs LGBTQ advocate and this is my real voice and this is how I really talk and this is very hurtful. If you take this video down, I don't know what I'll do because I need to be able to express myself every time it goes back up because they don't that, that's what they're fucking scared of. That's who took it down. That's what they're trying to say. He's a racist. And I go, no, I'm just retarded. I'm not racist. I'm a retard. My good friend, R.I.P. Liam Dugan, he actually passed away not too long ago, but he, during the pandemic, he would say that. He would walk into places with no mask on and people would be like, you need to wear a mask. He would go, oh, I'm fucking retarded. I'm retarded. It's okay. I have special needs. And they, they wouldn't do anything. <laughs> oh, man. You guys just made your own pass. The retard pass. You got to make something. I don't know if I can say that word, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have a mask on. You're probably fine. <laughs> Who knows, man? Some people will ask me for deals and they'll see the videos. Hey, he used that word. I don't want to work with you anymore. But yeah. I don't really care about be like, oh, this guy, this guy tells the news. But Well, but, you know, I don't know. People don't want, they just want a reason to be able to hate you. Yeah. They're all, they, like, and, and that's why it's so hard. Like, I'm, I'm blessed with real fans. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I lose followers here and there, but like. My fans are like, yo, they're fucking hardcore. They're yeah. Like, so I, I'm, I'm blessed that way because then I have shitty fans who just come, who just like, come know, and go, come yeah, and go, yeah, pick yeah. and choose. They There's won't a really layer of that. You. There's always a yeah. layer of that. You your know? real fans, whatever merch you make, your real fans will all buy that. Whatever venue you're gonna go to, True. your real fans will come. It's not to like, um, the goal isn't to have like as much fans as you can. That's good. You can have as much fans as gonna, you know, is gonna be money. You're gonna have people that will support you. But having real fans is completely different. It's one yeah. that will wait outside a venue, that will get front row tickets, that will comment, share, like every video. It's the yeah. little things too, you know, and buy every merch you make. So yeah, try to get real fans. And you, you already have a lot of real fans too, I could tell, yeah? Yeah, this is good. It, yeah, like I said, it's, it's, you know, I feel blessed that way. Mm -hmm. And I just hope, um, you know, there's so many more people out there that would like me that just don't know I exist. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. they would be real fans. Mm. So, and it's just hard because like Canada doesn't have a Rogan. I mean, this is, you know, your platform is huge. Oh, and then, you know, and like, so you're, you and six, but like, you know, the, this is what we have in Canada mm -hmm. to create, to actually affect culture, which you guys do. You actually affect culture because one, you actually make people smarter, which like, it's not like people are, staring at you know like asses or, or whatever people are looking at on instagram buttholes and uh <laughs> chicks tits and stuff it's like an art it's like here's a thing that's happening and like it keeps people aware of what's happening and the fact that everybody wants to be in the know mm -hmm. is good it's good it, it's and the, and the fact that justin trudeau is trying to you know ban the news when that's like the highest shared stuff on social media that's the highest viewed besides like it's a girl's ass and then it's what happened today. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's, I think it's, it's, and it, you know, if that, I don't, I hope that doesn't affect guys like you or girls. I don't know if you're, you're, you're wearing I identify as woman. Yeah. You, uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> you offended me. I no, identify I'm <laughs> as a sparkly cloth, but yeah, if you, you know, affecting people like, you're telling the news as much or more as any fucking idiot at CBC, mm -hmm. right? But you're actually telling it better because you you have a way to connect to people that people like see a CBC or oh, I already saw that on fucking Real Toronto. Like, so that's that's the power that you guys have, which is sick. And then people find out about me and they go, "Thank God, thank God." There's somebody who's fucking saying just what they think and not just like bullshit. Mm -hmm. about you know well i wouldn't say that because no trudeau is you know not i don't really want to get into it but trudeau is 
fucking up the country, obviously, in some way, because yeah. he's making people crazy. That's more so than the inflation and all that. And then also on top of that, he's making people insane. He's on both sides. Mm-hmm. You know, the people with the fuck Trudeau flags. I have a joke where I say the people with the fuck Trudeau flags. Like if you have three fuck Trudeau flags on your car, like that's the equivalent of wearing like three masks. <laughs> you know what I mean, that's the right wing equivalent of of doing it because it's you're still kind of you're kind of an idiot. Like, like, you know, if I see a fuck Trudeau flag, I'd be like, I agree. Fuck Trudeau. But I don't want to hang out with you. I don't <laughs> know the guy behind the flag, <laughs> yeah. you know, so, um, you know, people make those same people hate the pride flag, but then mm-hmm. they have a fuck Trudeau flag. Well, you can't have every bank in Canada have a fuck Trudeau flag behind it. Right. Mm-hmm. But they would, they would love that, which is not necessarily good either. So, and then the people on the left are insane because they just want everything to be bad. They don't want any good entertainment. They don't want to watch anything that makes them feel bad or, or offended or anxious or depressed or it's just, it's just bullshit. So, and then the majority of people are in the middle. Those, I mean, most of my fans are people in the middle who are like, I don't like, I have fans who are like, I voted fucking jag me, but I think you're hilarious. Like, I don't think it matters. It shouldn't matter. Yeah. It shouldn't. And you could, you should be able to agree with people from all these sides, but you know, I kind of digress here, but yeah. 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 You have fans from all over the place. Do you, you don't care if they're liberal, you don't care if they're conservative and fans are fans to you, right? Of course. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I, the only thing I don't like is when they're just mentally ill, (laughs) you know, but that's, that's going to happen. Look at every major artist has meant like their core fan base, the people who wait outside. Yeah. A lot of them like are mentally ill. Thankfully with, comedy it's not as much like that because it's more like you people feel like they're your buddy so they're kind of like fuck bro can i get a pick like it's not like where it's like taylor swift type shit where they're like please don't fucking i'll stab my own throat to fucking touch your like you know it's not like that extreme Mm -hmm. yet i mean i don't know if i i don't know if that's gonna happen yeah there is a comic in the states who's basically that big matt reif i don't know if you've heard of him but Uh, right familiar he's uh he just did a big deal, two hundred like fifteen million dollar deal with Live Nation. Nice to do a world tour. So that's you know those are like big goals. So I, I'm I'm very happy with my fan base and all that. And I'm always just I'm like you. I'm I'm working every day. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck do I post today? You at least kind of know. You're like, this happened. Let's post it. Yeah. I'm like, what's my angle? I gotta just fucking put a wig on, and I, I don't even really like doing that. <laughs> to be honest, like if if the trans stuff and all this stuff wasn't so big and heated, like it's it's like. You know, if I put a wig on, it's offensive to trans people. But if you you put a wig on and I'm offended, I shouldn't be like it's, it just doesn't make sense. You know, mm-hmm. it's like it, if if we're going to normalize, normalize stuff, you should be able to make fun of it. That's how yeah. you normalize it. That's how you go. Oh, let's have a laugh about it. And now like, you know, OK, mass immigration's happening. We're just not going to talk about it. Like I have jokes about it where because in you, you guys posted something about the fucking the new immigrants like coming here and they're shitting on beaches, right? Or they take a shit or on Or something beach. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think and I like, you know, and the white people don't know what to do because they can't go to the city council and be like, hey, there's fucking Indian shitting on my beach, right? But they, so my plan was that if, and I feel bad for the old Indians, right? Like the natives, because now we have, we're, we're like, we used to call them Indians. Now we don't. And now we bring other Indians here to shit on their beach. <laughs> and then, so I'm saying what we should do is just, if you're a new immigrant and you want to shit on a beach, just do a land acknowledgement first, right? So you're going to take a shit, just do a, this is the sacred land of the Oceanabe and I'm going to take it. Um, or whatever. That's the joke. But, um. But you, but that, but that also is, you just laugh at that. And then you're like, it's not a big deal now. You know what I mean? We got people shitting on a beach. Who gives a fuck? It's funny. It's fucking funny. You telling me, oh, there is nothing funny that when you (laughs) shitting on a beach, I don't give a fuck what culture that is. You could be from fucking Ukraine. If you're shitting on a beach, it's funny. Like it's, it's funnier that you're Indian because you're going, I have to shit and he just ate so much fucking biryani and it's funnier, but you know, it's. You know, that's just why is it funnier when people will laugh and go, that's racist. And it's like, yeah, I know. But I, this isn't how people are actually talk. We're t- this is for entertainment. And it's funny as fuck to think of an Indian guy. I'm going to go to Coburg with my family and <laughs> just take a shit. And there's a white guy watching it going, what fucking Christ is going on here in this country? 
I'm the media. I'm the guy in the middle going, I'll joke about it. So then everybody can just go, okay, let's, that's a reality. Move on. Yeah. Next, what's next? Mm -hmm. Cause there's bigger fish to fry. Like I, like I feel bad for um, people like who, especially new immigrants who come to Toronto and think they have to live in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Like I have to, it's like, dude, just go to fucking Calgary. You'll, yeah. You, yeah. Much go cheaper, to, you, for you. cheaper. You won't more be killing yourself. This guy was mm -hmm. crying in the Uber. Persian guy telling me he works 16 hours a day and he's no money and his apartment's 2,400 bucks a month. And I'm like, dude, go somewhere. Like, yeah. And Toronto is like, you, you know, mm -hmm. I'm from Toronto, mm -hmm. so I don't want to leave because I'm from here, but that's what it does to you. It makes you want to stay. But once you leave, you go, there's fucking other places. Yes. Yeah. Country that, that, are, that are affordable and fun. And the women aren't as fucking retarded. <laughs> And Toronto's yeah. Toronto women are not not good at all. What really. do you think about them? <laughs> well, they're just they're they're just embracing the dumbest aspects of American female culture. And you know, basically, if you're a Toronto Toronto girl, a girl from Toronto, mm -hmm. and you're you know, oh, you're a seven or up, or even a six and a half and up, yeah, you're a, you're a prostitute. You just become a prostitute. Or like, or or like an OnlyFans girl in this city, like, or like, basically, like, go down to the uh, the lake, yeah, on a sunny day in the summer. That's where all the all the city's sevens and up yeah. are there. Yeah, they're all at the lake on dudes' boats. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I actually went. I, I dated this girl once who had these two male friends who owned a boat with, it was some weird fucked up thing. She was like, they were like 10 years older than her, but I was like, okay. And <laughs> went on the boat with them. Like, this is what we do when you're not here. And, <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, this is fun. They dock the boats, right, at Toronto Island. This is what all the rich people do, right? They mm -hmm. take their boat, their little mini yachts and their big yachts, and they fucking dock them there. And they all have like one female friend or two or three and those girls go on fucking Tinder or Bumble and they go as a girl on the friend finder, Bumble friend finder shit. And then they just go, my friend, uh, ha friend has a boat, friend has a boat. Like it's not because it, they match with on there, the friend finder, the girls match with all the other hot girls. Uh huh. What's she going to do for me? Does she know a dick that has money that I can fucking. So anyway, that's part of the culture. And then they fucking. So then they, there were boats showing up with like 20 like 18 year olds. Yeah. Just on, and the dudes are like 38, 40, 43, 50. And it's just like, what the fuck is this? And you don't even see these girls otherwise. Like, where the fuck are they? You don't see them on the street. You don't see them having a coffee at on Bloor Street. Right. So, you know, and not to say, obviously, there's good women everywhere and blah, blah, blah. But that is the culture that you see online. And that's, you see it in reality down, down, down by the fucking lake, dude. And, and there's nothing really wrong with it. Yeah. You know, like, I don't have a problem with it other than, you know, like at the time I was, you know, I was like, I'm jealous of these guys mm -hmm. in a way. But then you go, no, I'm not. Because I remember the one guy goes, this is like, they all had nicknames for like the one girl. They're like, oh, that's Sailor Sally or something like bullshit. I was like, what does that mean? Oh, because she sucked every sailor, dick. <laughs> all the captain's dicks or something. Captain, whatever the fuck. I'm like, and she's like talking to me like, Throw me in. I'm like, what, what the fuck is, bro? this is fucked up. Like. You know, you go like I was in Austin, Texas, and it's like people like there's still gold diggers and shit, but it's, you know, th there's also just a group. There's just people. Americans don't feel as they, I don't think they're as desperate as Canadians, like just for every everything. We're desperate, you know, like we're like, fuck, how do I get fucking there? It's just like it's, it's America, baby. Fucking do it. But here, this especially with all the taxes and stuff and. It, you know, it just makes everybody fucking anxious because every dollar you make, you're like, I only made fucking 45 cents mm -hmm. or 55 cents, depending, you know. So it's like, it's a lot of pressure on, on everybody. And that's why you see, I, I drove, there was a girl in, uh, driving, I passed, she's in a fucking Mercedes, G, the coupe, like the mm -hmm. nicest coupe you can get, like the whatever, what is it? The G GLE, GLC. GL, yeah, the GL, whatever. AMG, half of it painted pink and it says, and her license plate's like, kiss my pinky pussy, like some bullshit. She's like some fucking OnlyFans, rich. Yeah. Bitch. And she's driving around like, 
like fuck you like it's which is fine that's cool it's like la now that's what toronto is right so like i said i have no problem with it i mean the, obviously if you want to actually find like a woman to start a family with like it's you want to meet some girl from Toronto who's like, oh, you, do you have a boat? Like, it's not going to, you're like, you're an idiot. You know what I mean? Like, it's just outsource. It's what I did. You just got to find somebody like go three hours, just pick anywhere three hours away from Toronto, dro- drop a dot on a map, drive to that town. doesn't matter what race you are. Like people, oh, the white girl's not, go out the fucking, li-. all they see is white guys. If you yeah. go there and you're cool and fun, they don't give a fuck. You know, if anything, they'll suck your dick even, like even more. So it's like, yeah, what the fuck's the point of? Um, and there's chicks who aren't white out there, mm-hmm. which is more normal. Yeah, you know, people are just like, oh, once you leave Toronto, it's all white. It's not true. Every whole fucking country is pretty multicultural. I'm not gonna lie, I've been to every fucking city. That was I had a joke a, a couple weeks ago about that. It's like Chinese people are everywhere. They literally, like every city I've been to, like in Regina, they like they can't say it. They can't even fuck the. I live in Regina. They they don't even fuck. And they're just like new immigrant Chinese. I remember, but it's craziness. Cause I have a bit about that where I say like our, you know, like white or Canadian or whatever, but like our revenge on new immigrants is we get, we make them say the names of the place they have to live in Canada. Then they can't say it like in China. And I did it in BC where it's like Burnaby, BC. And it's all Chinese, right? Oh yeah. Burnaby, Burnaby, Burnaby. (laughs) But it's just funny. Now we have to say that for your whole life. (laughs) Or- oh man, you're making me die, bro. <laughs> oh man, so you I think hope. there's like not that many wifeable girls in Toronto, and they're mostly like outside of the city, a few hours away. What are, uh, the advice you basically gave out is basically that you know drive two, three hours away. Da, da, da. Do you think feminism played a role in girls acting like this nowadays, especially in Toronto? I mean, obviously it played a role, but feminism traditionally, like my mom was a feminist in, in, in tradi- like, but she wasn't like a fucking OnlyFans hooker. An OnlyFans <laughs> like feminist, she yeah. was She was a teacher, but she yeah. was like, a fem- I have my own job, I have my own money, but I have, you know, I, she had husbands, but, you know, she had divorces, you know, I get that, like, you know, but, and, like, I, I, again, if you want to sell piss, p- pics of your fucking pussy in your feet, I mean, fucking, I wish, if I probably, I probably would if I could, you know what I mean? So I don't know, um, but, like I said, it's just about, like if you want a family and you have people like this culture of like, it's basically like it's a gold digging culture. Like, and and it's not, it's because we're in kind of like a depression recession, like everybody's poor. Yeah. So, and it's the same, like uh, everywhere. It's like women are now it's, Oh, I don't care that you're cool and you're fucking, but cool, handsome guys who are poor are still getting pussy. Like here and you know there, what I mean? yeah, yeah. like not even like I've, I'm, one of my friends, Armin, he gets pussy all the time and he's like, but he's tall. He's like 6'3", yeah. but he lives with his mom. He's 24, but he still gets tons of pussy. I don't know how he like it, but I, I remember when I was 24, I lived with my mom and I, I did get pussy too. I don't, there's something about that when you're that age, there's like a grace period of like, you don't have to be, I'll still fuck you. But those girls, every girl you date when you're 24 was probably fucking a 40 year old at the same time. If you're from Toronto, at least. Yeah. Like go to... Well, I, when I used to do commercial real estate, I go to Earl's on King, mm-hmm. King and uh, University. Go to Earl's like after on like a Thursday or something after the after work crowd leaves and goes to like King Street or some other bars. All the like 18 or 19 year olds just show up like in fucking like hordes. And there's like a couple old men there like doing. So, I don't know. They're like, pimping them out or some fucked up Weinstein Epstein shit yeah. going on in this in and and the women are just i don't know if it's feminism or it's just they're naive they're naive and they don't even know what that means a lot of the girls are like, what's naive mean like it means you're an idiot basically but it means it's my zodiac sign <laughs> so and I, look I, I i honestly have not dated in toronto in a long time and like since basically before the pandemic anybody i've dated if they even if they lived in Toronto, they were like from somewhere else. Like they weren't like I haven't really dated fucking Toronto a Toronto girl. Yeah. So to speak, since before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. So I don't yeah. know. It's, yeah, I don't Do you know. like would you want a girl that just stays at home, cooks, cleans, but doesn't bring any money in? Or would you rather have a girl 
that you could go 50 50 with but you also have to like cook clean and do everything with at home like would you rather have like a complete traditional wife or like semi-traditional i think i mean i think any guy i'm, I'm i think most guys would say they want a traditional life yeah to just be at home and cook and clean and mm -hmm. family make and you know home make and the only reason guys hesitate on that is because they're worried they can't make enough money yeah to in the city. keep one right but again then go fucking somewhere else or because you know even if it's 50 50 with a woman it's never 50 50 with a woman like if you're a guy unless you're a fucking cuck you know whatever like it's never gonna be really like okay babe well actually like here i no one night you're gonna be like let's go for dinner you want to impress her you want to do it there's this whole like oh 50 50 50 nobody's doing 50 if you were 50 50s for like people who work at fucking mcdonald's no offense i mean i know some of your fans might work at mcdonald's but hopefully not forever yeah hopefully not forever like for fuck's sake yeah. that's what this whole metro thing with the metro grocery stores and their on strike and i get it and i feel bad for the people who work there but there's these videos on ctv of like some woman and she's like i've been working at metro for 35 years and i still can't afford a home it's like no shit you couldn't have fucking you couldn't afford a home you couldn't afford a home 35 years ago working at metro let alone now so what and what kind of that should you should be able to work a job that an 18 year old does as a summer job for a career and have a four bedroom three bath no do something interesting with your fucking life so, i mean that's my opinion and I, i'm sorry that that will offend people oh, i'm i'm not better than this you are I, I, this is motivational you are mm -hmm. you are better than working at fucking anybody's better than working at fucking metro for 25 that's fucking bullshit yeah like, I get if you're, like, severely disabled or, you know, you're, like, a Walmart greeter or something. But, like, for fuck's sake, like, put out a resume. Move on up. Go to Loblaws. <laughs> like, at bare minimum. <laughs> Trying to go to TNT. Maybe fucking yeah. Put on a mask and work at TNT. Mm -hmm. And for girls, do body count matter for you? Do you care about any of those things like that? I mean, I have a fiance and uh, a child. so. Oh, you don't care about that. <laughs> well not now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i can't be like baby um but like generally for the people listening and the young mm -hmm. guys i think it matters to an extent like if fuck if she's like 25 years old and she's like i slept with 30 guys like it's like what the fuck is i mean i don't know like it's kind of like i get it you're hot and you just want a dick but like i'll fuck you too but you don't like do I, i'm not a family i don't know <laughs> yeah but maybe maybe family when she's 35 and she's fucked 100 then it's like then it's like back to zero because she's just like i'm done like i don't i don't really know i i don't I, I don't think about that stuff i never really did when i was with girls like i never was like oh, like whenever those conversations would come up it was usually the girl would ask and be like when we get and i would just lie and say something like you know because every guy's body count, like every guy who's like, oh, I care about body count. It's like, but his body count's like 30 times higher than hers. Mm -hmm. Like I slept with nine guys. And he's like, yo, you're a fucking slut, eh? It's like, How many have you slept with? Oh, like 158. <laughs> 60 of them were Chinese. <laughs> Paid for it. Oh, man. Um, yeah. So I don't think that matters to so the ladies out there. Just you know what matters Just stop. Just be interesting for fuck's sake. Nobody. No guy really cares how many fucking dicks you've had. If you can hold a conversation, if you because all those all those old school women that everybody wanted to fuck Marilyn Monroe and, you know, Meryl, St maybe not Meryl Streep. She's kind of a, but in the day she was hot. But even before that, Marilyn Monroe and I forget what the other there was another lady. She's super attractive back then. They fucked all the time. They probably fucked way more. They probably fucked more than any of the girls fuck now. There was no social media. There was no fucking. They just fucked. They just sucked. They didn't give a shit. There was no consequence. And nobody found out. You, oh, if you're five miles away from your house, they never find out. There's no fucking Facebook. There's no. Sh they, they can't look you up. What do you look, look you up in yellow pages? I mean, it's fucking ridiculous, right? So they fucked, but they didn't care because the women were interesting. They were, even if they were sexy, like Marilyn Monroe was sexy, but there, you know, there was something there. It wasn't just her looks. It was like she was mischievous. She was interesting. She talked. 
They all fucking talked. They had to gift the, the, the gift the gab. The women now have no interest in being interesting. They don't. I actually, I'm addicted to watching these videos of like this, this like black dude in Miami. He just drives around. He has like the fucking Corvette and he walks, he was like, he parks it. And then he goes and walks up to random chicks and he's like, yeah, you gotta get your number. Like you're hot, whatever. And she's like, no, ew. And then he like, beep beep and like gets into his fucking corvette or whatever yeah and then the girl's like hey like where are you, where are you going and it's just like and then one girl sits in his car and and she's and he's like so what are you gonna do for like what do you do for me like what she's like this is this is it this is the package <laughs> i am the table <laughs> it's basically yeah i am yeah it's i am this and you can put your dick in and around this but i have I'm going to basically annoy the shit out of you. And it's just like, why, ladies? You're not going to get the highest quality man that way. Just be interesting. Read a fucking book. Read some history. Have some context. Stop being outraged at everything. Stop being upset. Stop. Why, 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 is, why are hot women's thoughts controlled by ugly LGBTQ fat people's I'm offended? And so now hot chicks have to be like, well, I don't think that's funny either. Like, what the, shut up. Shut up. You're hot. You like hot girls instinctually find offensive shit funny because they're like, I'm better than everybody because I'm hot. Yeah, they That's, have that mindset. <laughs> and then they even have to lower their. There their was talk. an article that you guys probably shared too, where is that conservative women are better looking than liberal women on tip, Yeah. On average. And then um also there was another one that we posted. It was um women, they want uh traditional men. But they want liberal men. It's like you can't have mm. it both ways. Yeah, they want a guy who is strong and hunts and and fucks well and and fixes his car and fucking. But also, you know, votes for Biden and votes for Trudeau and blah, blah, blah. like it's like what are you fucking dumb? And and you know and then and then she would and then also she would vote for Trudeau and fuck Trudeau if Trudeau came to her house and said fuck me she'd fuck him, fuck her, fuck those women. They 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 they, they have no idea. They're living in, and it's it's our culture, like as our culture, our age group of like the '90s kids, our things like as guys and from Toronto and stuff, we're like we don't give a fuck. We like laughing at offensive shit. We don't care. We we have friends of every race. Blah blah. blah. Girls of the same age are like, they're just barely hanging on. If they're not doing OnlyFans or something, they're at some office job and they're just don't say anything bad. I'm just so. Why? What's the point of having a job? embrace that you're a human being fuck being a woman just be a fucking human being and mm -hmm. be like yeah i have these views maybe i don't because if more women stood up during covid and during other stuff then it wouldn't have happened it wouldn't have been so bad but it was just that so many women no offense but so many fucking women just kept their mouths shut during COVID and were just like, I'll just get the vax and I'll do it. And even though I don't agree with it and I don't, oh, and then all the women that, oh, their periods were all fucked up because of the vaccine and, oh, but I won't say anything about that because, uh, uh, why? What are you afraid of? But the, but those same women have no fear to email a fucking venue and, and, and email TikTok. This guy's a phantom. Pathetic. That's, I mean, that's why the society will, it will crumble. And or at least white people's part of it, right? The only white people that will survive are the ones that are like basically conservative, I, I think, because mm -hmm. they're the only ones having kids. Yeah, that's what this whole thing, like trans thing with Trudeau, where it's like he's pushing the LGBT, and it's like, so you're making all these pe people not have kids. You're basically saying to these people, this is the end of your bloodline. You feel trans at five, that's it. No more. No, you'll never have a kid. Your your parents don't get to have grandkids. It's kind of it's, I mean, it's fucked up, but it's also like, well, okay, then fine. Don't have kids then. Fuck it. Let all the fucking annoying people. Not that all gay people or trans people are annoying, but people who transition at five are typically pretty fucking annoying. Yeah. Um, when they're adults. Um, so who cares? Let all the cool people have kids. That's the one thing I'll say to your fans and followers: is if you're fucking cool, have kids. Because otherwise, that's it. Like, you're done. Mm -hmm. Like, why? Why are you ending your bloodline in 2023? Because it's too hard? Because inflation? Because people were fucking surviving through bubonic plagues and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, yep. and, 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 you know. World War II. World nukes. Wars. Yep. Bombs. Murder, everything. Concentration camp. 
survival. Mm -hmm. So, and now you're, oh, people are tweeting mean stuff online and there's Chinese accents out there and Ben Bank has went ching chong, bing bang. I can't have a child. Good. Let me have kids. And then my kids can be funny. <laughs> and your kids, you know, because your kids, yeah. they're like these people. Anyway, I digress. Yeah. But I think I made my point that the, the women in Toronto should be focusing on, is this it? This is your whole life is to just get drunk in Toronto with fucking mm -hmm. people you don't even like? Yeah. Have a fucking kid. And share one man with 10 of her girls. <laughs> yeah, that. And like, I get that, you know, like it's hard, like clout chasing and money and cars and boats. And, yeah. you know, I get it. But like have some self-respect that or or move too. Mm -hmm, yeah. Go to another fucking place where you don't have to be a hooker to pay Survive. your rent. Yeah. <laughs> so dark. Like it's so fucked up. Like my mom taught high school in, in Scarborough and it was like in, in the nineties and two thousands and it was like sketchy, but it wasn't like that. Like it was like, you know, it was more like stabbings and swords, seat guys and fucking it, like, I don't know. Like it's just, I don't know. I hope the, but, but then, you know, I'll, I'll be at the gym. Sometimes I'll play basketball and there'll be some kids, you know, some guys like 16 or something. And he's like, Oh yeah, no, we don't give a fuck. You know, I'm like, okay, well, I guess maybe this, maybe they're fine. I don't know. But, and I watch six buzz and some girl be like, yo, like, my man give me like eight grand, but like, I don't know if it's enough. And like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Yeah, speaking on that, I remember a few years ago you did a hit piece on my page. Oh yeah, yeah. What was that like? What made you do that? <laughs> to be honest, obviously I probably wanted attention. I probably wanted you guys to post it and be like, "Yo, who's this fucking guy?" And there were some. I, I think I did get some death threats for that actually. Really? For that? Uh, yeah. From who? Um, just like random people on TikTok. That's weird. Just like, yo, this is not. This guy's a goof. <laughs> um, but uh, I didn't even care about that. Why would they care about that? That's crazy. I don't know. But it was more about like six buzz two, like in a way. Like mm -hmm. I think it was. But I used you guys. I don't know why. I think I had made one about six buzz two. Like I had done. I did a sketch where I was the CEO of six buzz, and he's actually like a Jewish guy named Moisha Buzzstein. And he just goes, <laughs> and he just pretends to be like, yo. And then, like, I have, like, a nanny, and I'm like, Minda, can I get a coffee for fuck? But so I was just, like, trying to affect Toronto culture because I, and mm -hmm. I think that somebody has, like, somebody's got to make something about something. Like, yeah. Because right now, was funny. nobody making nothing about anything. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a few comics that you probably know, too, that make content, but they're not really commenting on, like, the more difficult aspects of things they are kind of just scratching the surface, which is, and if you can make like, I, this is me who I am. It's not like I'm doing mm -hmm. it for that purpose. But if you, if I could make money scratching the surface, I would, but I can't because people don't give a shit unless I, you know, say what I really think. Mm -hmm. and, and then people then, cause, and I feel like that's art because otherwise you're just faking it. You're just pretending yeah. you don't think stuff. And that's, and, and also that is what, Trudeau and these guys, they want everybody to be separate. They want everybody to feel, oh, I'm white, so I should be with whites. And they're, but, but that's, it's just not the fucking case. And five years ago, it wasn't the case. And at the Raptors parade, it wasn't the fucking case. You know, like that was peak Toronto 2019. Drake on a fucking, on a double decker bus, with, you know, and everybody's going nuts. And, you know, and then COVID just, and then everything after COVID was just like w getting woke and woke and woke. And to the point where now everybody's like segregated and fucking doesn't even talk to each other anymore. It's scared of each other. It's fucked. Mm, yeah. Totally fucked. It's, that's not what Toronto is all about. Tron and I, Toronto is about multiculturalism, but that means that people should be making fun of each other. And I get that people are like, but he's white, so it's racist. And it's like, but I live here and I'm looking around. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Yeah. Blow my brains out? Like, <laughs> or say something funny? Like, I don't, fuck. And I think I, I actually think that people who aren't white agree generally. They're just like, yeah, well, fuck, like, thank you, because it's getting awkward out there. It's getting awkward and it's getting racist. It's getting real racist. Yeah. Like, actually, not me doing jokes. It's getting like people like on the bus, like scared of each other. And it's fucked. It's mm -hmm. not good. It's not it's not Canadian way. 
of of handling things. And that's what Trudeau thinks he's the ultimate Canadian. It's like you're dividing people. You're not a guy up there making jokes about even if he was bringing in immigrants, but do one joke. Do a joke, Trudeau. Instead of taking pictures with your fucking kids at Barbie and Oppenheimer. Yeah, what do you think about that? He took his son to watch Barbie. He took his daughter to watch Oppenheim. I mean, I don't I don't really give a shit about that. I know what he's trying to do there and be like, look how woke I am. I took my son to see the gay one and my daughter to see the straight one. But it's like the this, this stupid part, the embarrassing part is that he just got divorced. Right. Yeah. And and but for me, I like the Barbie picture because I I saw that as him being a regular guy. Mm -hmm. Hey, I just had a divorce. I'm trying to piss off my ex-wife. I'm going to take a picture with my kid. I'm going to get a ton of likes and retweets. Fuck you, bitch. Like, that's yeah, what I yeah, yeah. that's what I got out of it. Like, and yeah. that's why I honestly in that moment, I was like, I like Trudeau mm -hmm. when he does shit like that. Like, not that I like him and would vote for him or whatever, but. You gotta like a guy who's like fuck you to his wife. Yeah, ex-wife. Yeah, ex-wife or wife. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. He's in, in, and then takes his daughter and he's like, look, but but it's unnecessary and stupid. And he's like, I want privacy. And then he's posting pictures and he he's he, he's like an Instagram celebrity now. There's rumors that he's fucking Taylor Swift or he's trying to sleep with Ariana Grande. And if he did, or he was, he will win every election because. All the girls that we just talked about who are like, you know, the percentage of them that do vote are going to be like, I'm voting for the guy who's banging one of my idols, Taylor Swift, or, um, you know, it'd be funny if she he was banging, what's that girl, Drippy Red or whatever? Or uh, Sexy, sexy red. red. Sexy, sexy red. red, yeah. Yo, Justin Trudeau just, <laughs> I saw him with Sexy Red. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, but... If he if he starts, that's what his father did, right? He was with so like his father was banging celebrities. So that's a that's a good way to win. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to win. You leave your wife, you start banging celebrities. People are like, "Fuck, that's sick." But that's what he wants. He wants to be like a king who bangs celebrities and is like fucking Saudi Arabian fucking prince, like just having bitches shit on his chest. Maybe, I don't know if that's what he wants because maybe it isn't and he's gay. The other thing is mm -hmm. people are saying he's gay and then other people are saying he's trans. He's going to become trans and he's going to be the first trans. <laughs> first minister, trans which would be yeah. fucking amazing. I mean, it would be hilarious. I, I that's, have to a me, lot of skits for that. <laughs> right. To me, that's just as funny as an Indian shitting on the beach. Yeah. Tr Trudeau becoming a... <laughs> be funnier if Trudeau dressed up like an Indian and took a shit on the beach. Mm -hmm. Are you a fan of Andrew Tate? Yeah, I actually, I uh, I did Tate, uh, I did Hustlers University for three months. Oh, randomly. really? Uh, How did that go? It was like before he was even popular. I just thought it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like, I, I, did, I did nothing. It was a waste of money. It was like, I didn't do anything. It was like, yo, you got to become a fucking, I don't even know. It's so stupid. Um, But basically the coolest thing about Hustlers University is they have a guy that messages you and pretends to be Andrew Tate. Yeah. And he goes. It's me, Top G. And you're like, is it really you? And he's like, yes, G. And like, he talks to you, but it's just some guy that he's yeah. hired to pretend to be yeah. him. And it's like pretty sick. That was like the funniest, coolest part. Um, but I know I felt bad. Like, I, I didn't, I don't know the, like, what happened, but obviously he's fucking huge celebrity, very influential, says what he thinks. He's part of, he's, he's, he's mainstream counterculture, right? And, just like how like Tucker Carlson's mainstream counterculture now. And mm. So it's important to have guys like that. You got to have guys like that. And he's awesome. I would fucking, I would meet him. I wouldn't be like, if people were like, you know what he did? Apparently nothing. Cause he's fucking yeah, free, he's free. So I don't give a fuck. Like, let's go for a steak dinner, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Somebody told me I had a follower. That's like a MMA guy who has a ton of followers. And he was like, I send you, Andrew liked your stuff a few times. Like apparently if this is, and I, th I, on I thought Twitter it was cool. or Instagram on Instagram. Oh, nice. Yeah. Or like sent it to, I don't know how, what he sent it to him on the guy who messaged me was on Instagram. So if that, I mean, that would be cool. Fuck Andrew, come out of the woodwork, post one of my sketches so I can be famous. And then I'll come there and, um, my fiance would be pretty upset if I started hanging out with Andrew Tate. <laughs> I would probably have to tell her, look, I'm sorry. <laughs> Gotta go hang out with Andrew Tate. Andrew That's Tate's right. Andrew Tate. And I'll be a fan, but I, yeah, I, I I like him. I do. And another question I have is your views on Chris Sky. 
because I interviewed Chris him. Scott. I just want to know like your views, opinions about him. Honestly, I've spoken to Chris Scott. Every time I've spoken to him, he's like a really nice guy. Yeah, and he's he's actually like a really nice guy when you talk to him, and like he's been put through the ringer. Like mm -hmm. he stood up for a lot of shit. Like I stood up for stuff more so in comedy. Like at the, especially like I was like standing up for I should be able to perform in a park. I should be able to say crazy shit about Teresa Tam. But he was like legitimately like we need to fight this shit. Like organizing crazy stuff. So kudos to him. I know he's had a hard time with all kinds of bullshit and stuff. Yeah. So I, I you know I. I and he, he he actually got a lot of votes. Like he got like seven, eight thousand votes or whatever. I'm pretty right? sure he got more. I yeah. think he got a lot more. Well, maybe we all got more because I had a lot. I have a, like every show I'm at, people are like, I voted for you. I voted for him. Like, I only got 203 votes. How is this possible? You got 203 votes. Yeah. <laughs> Did you expect more or less? I honestly I expected a thousand. I thought I'd get a thousand. So, so maybe that like it was off, but um, you know, Chris guys, he's funny too. Like in his own way, it's like a different, you know, it's not stand up. He's not a comedian, but he's a funny guy. Like he's, he has a good sense of humor. He can laugh about shit. He can laugh at himself. And um, yeah, he's, he, you know, I, I definitely don't hate him or anything. I, mm -hmm. I, 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 I watch this stuff. I think he's, you know, he, Maybe he needs to he needs a vacation or something. Yeah, for <laughs> he needs to, he went through. maybe he needs to like yeah. chill out. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's unfair. Like he'd be so big if the government didn't fucking like if there's no censorship. Like because he had accounts get shut down at like two hundred thousand Instagram. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, and he was on U.S. media and stuff. And it's like, why? Even if even if you disagree with him, even if he's spreading quote unquote disinformation, why shut him down? He's Canadian. He's Canadian voice. Mm -hmm. You want Canadians to have big voices. So if he has a big voice, that means somebody counter to him will have a big voice if they're if they're relevant. But if but this whole that's why I would always support Chris Guy, you know, cancel culture deleting his accounts because he said some crazy bullshit. Who gives a fuck? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't I don't actually know what he said, so don't quote me on that. And this is, you know, I, I it's not. Uh, I have no idea what he said. Maybe he threatened to kill somebody. I don't know. Maybe he shouldn't be able to do that. But um, either way, like maybe he was joking. So I make jokes, and uh, he says stuff, and it's important to allow people to fucking say what they want to think, what they want to say, because otherwise society becomes what we have now, where everybody's a pussy, and you know, I mean, not everybody, but online people are uh afraid to speak out ab about what they want to say or at work mm -hmm. you know so yeah uh last question i have before you wrap it up uh you said earlier about like you know the muslims against the lgbt things like that what's your opinion on it again like the muslims christians all uniting against uh well i have a bit right now where i basically to... say that i think that the muslims are going to save the whites yeah because um you know before this whole gay thing happened really um you know right wing white people would be like oh well you know there's too many muslims coming in this country you know like and then they watched tv and they saw like a muslim guy like screaming at a gay people i hate the gay people and they were like well maybe we should bring a couple more in you know so i not that and obviously a lot of white people i mean most gay people are white i feel like i don't know maybe I'm just, <laughs> that's what i they identify as my eye, eyes but um no i think that muslim people are right to do what they're doing and be like yo i don't want my kids to learn this at school and pretty much nobody does but we're the only ones who can say something because our religion explicitly says it like christians if christians say hey i don't want to too bad. Catholic. Catholic school has the pride flags everywhere. They don't give a shit. Yeah. So Muslims and are kind of the only religion kind of standing up to the the woke thing. But then again, like, you know, I don't know. Like Muslims will get offended at some other shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're uh -huh. like, uh, you know, drawings and stuff. No, but like there's something, you know, like again on drawings too when it comes to that. Like, you know, we, we, we get offended because we can't even make drawings on, on certain topics, things right. like that. If we can't do it, then we'll get offended too, you know? It's right. Pretty, but it's, like, yeah. I, but everybody has a thing they get offended at. But I think that like my thing is like North American culture is like, we just say, we do it anyway. Mm -hmm. We'd say the worst thing. We, we do the worst thing. 
say the worst thing for entertainment and you know um and it, i think it helps people get along but like i said with the gay thing with the that's a bit of mine that i do about that like trudeau is basically a bad traffic cop being like okay muslims come here gays oh shit, that was a car accident um you know like what did he think was going to happen they were going to put yeah gender clinics yeah. in the mosque or something mm-hmm. like, he's out <laughs> of his fucking mind right like it's just it's crazy and then to say oh it's white people convincing the muslims to be anti lgbt it's like what the fuck are you talking about they're coming from countries He's where dreaming. they're throwing gay people off buildings. Stoning them. Yeah, and then you're coming here and they're going, maybe your son Muhammad is gay. You're like, what did you think? <laughs> you don't think that's going to cause problems? Like, so, and honestly, that caused problems for pretty much every fucking culture, except for the extreme whitewashed white people who are like, my son Nathan is actually Katie. And we're like, those people are happy. Those 35 people in the or whatever you know hundred couple hundred people in the yeah. whole fucking country and everybody else is mad like it's bullshit fuck mm-hmm. I, no offense to those people but fuck you and shut up and move over and let's go back to teaching kids fucking math and science and not science like well there's male and female but no maybe not on a tuesday it's like just fucking teach kids the basic shit and let them figure it out if you want to be fucking trans when you're an adult and you're like you know what fucking been thinking about doing so if you if you want to be trans before you've even owned a car like try buying a car is anybody you know what i mean like buy something nice do Mm -hmm. a do a tattoo do a fucking thing like don't just cutting things off and taking hormones it's like there's already so many hormones in the food that we eat and the mcdonald's and the shit it's like just chill you're a kid if you're just fucking go to school you shouldn't have to learn about anal sex in like in grade two mm-hmm. maybe grade five we learned about it in grade five i don't know if you remember this before we get out of here do so you remember, about six grade six grade seven. five or six yeah we had my my school had puberty class and i actually saw this teacher miss hamilton i saw her on the street and we talked about it and she wrote and i was like remember puberty class so different but it was just kids being funny like it was like every kid would be like what's anal you know what I mean? And but it was like they were asking questions. I so I don't I don't even really have a problem. I, I like I just think that if the Muslims make a big stink about this, it's the only hope for it to be toned down a bit because anybody else who's gonna make a fucking big deal about it is gonna be called uh homophobic and yeah. all this kind of we stuff. We get a pass, yeah. Yeah, and it's yeah. sweet. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. <laughs> Convert. Convert. Yeah, they're like, we're homophobic. I can have as many wives as I want. Four. Four is the max. Is four the max? Yeah. Oh, shit. In that case, I want to be Mormon. (laughs) (laughs) I think they have a higher number. I don't know. Four is the max. Is that all Muslim? Most of us don't have four, but like, if we have the exceptions. (laughs) Do you? No. Man, I really appreciate you bringing me on. I hope it was entertaining for y'all. I know I ranted and raved a little. No, that was amazing. That was amazing. I uh, really good. This is what I do for a living. I talk. Yeah. Follow me, guys. Instagram at Ben Bankus two B E N B A N K A S. They deleted my first account. Ben Bankus and Ben Bankus on Twitter. BenBankus dot com tickets. I have shows coming up. Toronto, uh, September twenty seventh. Yuck yucks. It's gonna be three hundred people. It's gonna sell out. Get tickets um london ontario september 14th i know i'm going backwards here um hamilton ontario september 7th september 10th ottawa ontario uh, i don't know when this is coming out but it's august 18th i'm in thunder bay and we have a whole bunch of other dates coming up and you can check out my podcast i have my own podcast where i rant and rave and talk shit with my a couple of my friends who are hilarious it's called the bank is show it's on every app you can get it anywhere you can get it on my website, benbankus.com slash podcast dash show. Thank you guys for having me on. Hey, thank you for coming, man. I really appreciate it. This was a really good episode. I really enjoyed this. Fuck yeah. And uh, yeah, follow Ben Bankus on uh, all the social media no platforms he listed. Just been pretty- we'll get some more waters right now. But uh, <laughs> yeah, man, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, follow him on so- all social media platforms. Follow us. And yeah, take it easy, guys. You guys are the best. Peace.